Hey all, this is Ed from Experimental Airlines and I wanted to show you this new airplane design I've been working on that takes advantage of the foam board construction techniques, the arm and wing, the tubular fuselage, and the modular tail section. And I call it the Noob Tube. It's not really a plane for noob flyers, but it's a great first plane for foam board builders using this construction techniques. It's got a 30 inch wingspan. It's 30 inches long. The CG is it located exactly one third of the way back from the nose, so at 10 inches. It has a hatch here for the battery and electronics. By default, it has uh, square vertical and horizontal stabilizers with a uh, movable rudder and an elevator, of course. But these can be swept if you like. Fuselage is intended to be really easy to make, so I've just made it straight all the way back. So it's a little chubby in the back and a little snooty in the front to make up for that little excess weight in the back. But, as an advantage, it gives you a lot more room up front, ahead of the wing, to put your electronics and stuff. The idea behind the design was to give a simple propeller driven plane using the construction techniques that I detailed and using one 30 inch arm and wing, 6 inch cord, one 30 inch fuselage tube, 2 inch inner diameter, and one modular tail section with a vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, rudder, and elevator. I've equipped mine with a 200 watt, 1400 kV brushless motor and a 30 amp speed control, 8x3, 8 prop. Anything in that kind of general area should be adequate. It's got very generous uh, full length ailerons, about an inch and a half. A true airfoil, which gives it good lift and stall characteristics. The elevator is also about an inch and a half, as is the rudder providing a lot of uh, maneuverability. The noob tube I would consider to be the propeller cousin to the fugly jet, which I showed earlier, which is also a 30 inch wingspan, 30 inch length. Just a little different layout and of course uses a prop instead of an EDF. It's very easy to hand launch or you could add landing gear in the nose. So like the fugly jet, the noob tube is not going to be the prettiest plane at the field, but it's a piece of cake to build. It's very square and modular with most of the components adhered with two-sided foam tape, including the servos, the tail section onto the fuselage, and the wing onto the fuselage with a little reinforcement bead of a hot glue. So start by checking out my videos on the tail section, fuselage tubes, and the arm and wing. The recommended dimensions I've used here are a 5 inch airfoil cord and an inch to inch and a half control surface for the aileron. That results in a total cord of about 6.5 to 7 inches. The fuselage tube is 30 inches long and a 2 inch internal diameter, so the fold intervals on the inside of your fuselage tube are 2 inches, and the overall outside dimension of the fuselage tube ends up being 2.5 inches. And then for the tail, I've used a 4 inch total cord for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer with an inch and a half long control surface, and both of these were cut from the foam board that was left over from constructing the wing. And of course I've applied tape to the bottom surface here before constructing the integral uh, control surface there for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. I've made my horizontal stabilizer half the span of the total wingspan 
roughly. So this is 14 inches for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer is usually half of that. And this one is in fact six and a half inches tall. The overall wingspan of the plane is 30 inches, which is one width of Dollar Tree foam board. Once constructed, the modular tail section is affixed to the fuselage as far back as possible and allowing the elevator to articulate up and down, clearing the fuselage there. And I like to use two-sided tape to initially attach the tail, get it positioned securely, and then squirt a little hot glue in both sides right here. And that makes for a very strong mounting. The same is done with the wing. Apply with two-sided tape and then apply hot glue in the crack there. And I've never had one of these get loose. I have used a 1400 kV motor with a metal motor mount, which I've got a video on. You can use your discretion on the motor mount here. And an 8x38 prop. And this generates about 200 watts. Something about that size is pretty adequate to make this plane do uh, mild aerobatics. I've made a 5 inch hatch, 2 inches wide, just forward of the wing, which is more than adequate space to put your electronics. I've got an orange RX receiver here, double sided taped to the top. I've actually got a satellite receiver, which you can't see, which I've placed back in the tail, just for peace of mind. And the speed controller is just kind of hanging out in the same compartment. This is more than ample room to place a battery up to 2200 milliamp hours. And then there's a little bulkhead right here, separating the battery compartment from the motor. Again, depending on your flying skills, if you predict some crashing, you may wish to double or triple this bulkhead for a little additional protection against the battery flying forward in a crash and hitting the rest of your electronics in the motor in the front. The ailerons are each controlled by individual servos buried in the bottom of the wing. Here I've just covered with some duct tape and use the gift card uh, control horn idea. And so there's one of those in each wing. And then for articulating the rudder and elevator, I've got an individual servo for each, just simply taped to the surface. You can bury these further in the control surfaces or even put them inside the fuselage if you want to go for a more streamlined aerodynamic uh, model. But for expediency, it's really hard to beat this 3M Scotch two-sided foam tape just to stick it right on the surface and go flying. I've located the center gravity on this plane 10 inches back from the nose, which is exactly one third of the total length of the plane. And the thickest part of the camber of the wing is located at that spot. So your center of gravity should typically be one third to one quarter of the total cord of the wing back. In confirming your center of gravity for this or any plane that you may be designing, here's an idea of how to locate that. Um, first, Take your fuselage tube and load up all the electronics and the tail so that it is weighted exactly as you intend it to for flight. And then take your wing, and typically you want your center gravity again to be on the most cambered part of the wing, about 25 to 33% behind the leading edge. And take your wing and just put it on a flat surface like this, and then balance your fuselage wherever it goes. And when it's balanced like that, again, with all the electronics, and tail section in place, this will be your center of gravity right over the point on your wing that's most cambered, which is typically about 33% back. Then you can take your wing and affix it in that position.